Uh, hi. Uh, first, uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, you know, welcome to a small talk. Uh, the, the change happened last week, and uh, uh, so I have made a few changes to the original plan uh, when I further understood that there'll be a number of startups over here. So I can't see many of those in the audience because of lighting, but are there any folks who are uh, running startup companies in the audience? Okay, there are. So good. So, I've, so what I'll talk about, it's showing up, is basically taking startups to market. So I thought, you know, as a telecom company, we have uh, been working with startups quite a bit, actually, over the last year and a half or so. And then we've seen some examples of where uh, startups working with telcos are doing well, and some cases where startups working with telcos are doing less well. And one thing became quite clear to me that you guys, uh, the startups, do very well on their own when they go from, say, <coughs> zero customers and start up to say about 1,000 daily active customers. And the key challenge you guys face is when you want to go from say 1,000 daily active customers to say 10,000 daily active customers and more. Now after that, of course, the, the value of the network takes over. And that's where I think telcos can provide uh, fantastic value. So this is what I'm going to talk about. I hope it's a subject of some interest to you folks. So I look at strategy and new business uh, in Indosat which uh, involves uh, a large part of that is the digital services of which startups are one. Uh, so I'm part of Uridu, uh, which is, I mean, my company, Indosat, is part of Uridu, which is uh, formerly uh, Qatar Telecom. Uh, in uh, Indosat, we have about 60 million customers. Uh, the country is, uh, Indonesia uh, is in Southeast Asia, about 250 million people, 100% adult literacy. So it's a very literate country. Uh, large country, number four in the world by uh, population. Growth rates are pretty good, about 6-7% growth rates, and e-commerce rates are absolutely fantastic. Uh, so within the digital space, we are following a four-pronged approach. <coughs> we still do some things ourselves. So obviously being a telco, we can't outsource everything. We have outsourced call center, we have outsourced network. I don't know whether we can outsource digital as well, but we do a bit ourselves. Uh, we do commercial deals, so you know, startups and other folks come to us, we do a commercial deal where we get something in return for the access we provide to 60 million customers. Some businesses we're doing through joint ventures, so obviously startups don't remain startups very long, they either go bust or they become big. So once they become somewhat larger, in some cases we work in joint ventures with, uh, with uh, larger companies. And the last one, most interestingly, is we also invest, and actually invest quite liberally in helping people with interesting ideas and lots of passion to actually establish and grow their businesses. In terms of partners, we have, of course, the international partners doing various stuff with them. We have a large number of Asian partners, but the, the thing right at the bottom, which is the local partners are ones which I think would be the most relevant for, uh, for startups in the audience. Uh, this is the bits we're doing ourselves, the ones in red, which is mobile finance, mobile banking, uh, e-commerce and mobile advertising. Uh, uh, so this is our mobile uh, wallet service. Uh, hell of a lot, so we do shopping, bill payments, transfers, top-ups, e-commerce, insurance, and so on. But frankly, what's most interesting for startups is the next one. So when we started the mobile financial services uh, uh, business, we have about 1.4 uh, million customers. It became quite clear that one bit which was missing for startups, for e-commerce companies, for new companies, is how do you collect cash when actually you make a sale? So there are basically two methods in developing markets which work, uh, well, at least work in terms of scale. One is cash on delivery, so someone takes the goods, goes to somebody's home, the person sitting at home offers some cash for the goods, and then the guy goes away. Now in five, four out of five cases, there's not enough cash at home, so the person has to go back and come back again. And in many cases, there's an issue of what happens if the good's not nice and the fellow wants to give it back. So cash and good has to be exchanged again. So this is one thing why we started this thing called Mint, primarily going after startups. We have signed up a large number of startups to actually uh, you know, uh, enable easy payments using 
credit cards, debit cards, mobile wallets, and so on for e-commerce, and that's growing quite well. We also have an e-commerce store. I won't spend too much time on it. Uh, I talked about the second option, which is working with joint ventures. Uh, we announced yesterday, uh, day yesterday at the Mobile World Congress, this joint venture with uh, Smarto, which is a large uh, advertising company, German company based out of the US, actually, uh, uh, where we have a real-time uh, uh, bidding exchange platform for advertising plus a supply-side platform. Now coming to the most interesting bit, the bit where I think from startups would be uh, most interesting. So we were working with a number of new companies. I'm a, uh, a, a mentor as well for Endeavor. I saw Endeavor in one of the slides before. And we're working with many of these, you know, these small companies with fantastic ideas, with great uh, founders who are not in a position to actually scale the business. And in developing markets, I think one of the speakers earlier spoke about it being so much easier in the US compared to Spain for startups to actually grow and scale and set up. I can tell you in emerging markets, it's even more difficult. So there are so many other issues, and the failure rates are far, far higher <coughs> in emerging markets compared to the more established markets. So, and it's, it's, it's higher for multiple reasons, money of course, but also because there's not much guidance given to the smaller companies to actually grow. So we set up an accelerator called Ideabox. We have incubated uh, 12 companies in two batches, four in the first batch, eight in the second batch. And in each, we get about 400 applicants. We shortlist them down to about 20, uh, maybe 25. We take them through a week of very rigorous uh, mentoring and coaching, and then finally select four, where we give them money, of course. We give them mentoring, and we have some pretty hard-hitting mentors to help them grow their business. Uh, but most importantly, we offer them access to 60 million customers. And these are some of the companies which we have invested. So from a telco perspective, just to give you know, ideas where, in case you are looking to raise money from telco-backed venture funds, where we become most interested are those where the network, the phone, is at the center of the service. So uh, let's take a few. So one of the companies we incubated uh, was this company called Nomic, which does, uh, which is a comics aggregator. So when, we first, when I first looked at them, they had no revenue model. They frankly had no business model. But I was pretty 100% sure that's the company I want to put money in because I should read comics as a child. No one reads comics anymore. And it doesn't take that much of bandwidth. So we, got, we invested in this company. Uh, and Kadukawa, which is a large Japanese uh, comics aggregator, came in at very various times multiple of what we had invested and incubated a few months after that. And the model is quite simple. It's free. We zero rated the data. The, data, the you know, comics don't take much data anyway. We give data for free. And you sort of read one chapter, a second chapter. The third chapter, you see a few ads and go to chapter number three. So that's the kind of model. So I've, I'll talk about that. The other one, which is quite interesting, uh, and, and you know, you'd see it, most of the speakers have been from, you know, from developed markets. This is an example from an emerging market. I live in Jakarta. If any of you have been to large cities in Asia, you'll see that it's massively crowded. For going 10 kilometers, you could take one and a half hours in. So it's almost like you know, Barcelona during the Mobile World Congress. It's, you know, it's that bad. So you have these motorcycle taxis. So you have these uh, you know, un, uh, you know, unemployed uh, youth who have two pairs of smelly helmets. So we'll give you one to put on your head. You have to wash your hair after you reach your destination. And you sit on a motorbike. You weave through traffic. If you survive, you reach a destination and you pay a small amount of money. Now, these folks, these guys, there are apparently 18,000 of them in Jakarta, and there are about four, 5,000 in Bali and so on. So these folks are busy in the morning. They are busy in the evening, because when they are ferrying people in and out of work or into the station and so on, and they are completely empty in the course of the day. But what do they have? They always have the phone. The phone can tell where the location is, and through the phone, the person can be rated for a service. So we have converted this company, converted this, this, you know, these motorcycle taxi folks into courier delivery folks. You know, so you, you, could, uh, you could say, pick up, I'll give my suit for retailing or restitching, pick up my suit and get it back. So you don't have to sit in your car and go through two hours of traffic. This person gets the, gets the, uh, the, uh, the suit in or gets the pizza in. And you have to, we have a service where they are rated, so you know, it's a pizza and the guy's pat into it, he should get zero points, right? So we have that kind of service as well. So, so these are some of the examples which, uh, which we incubate. We've had, as I said, incubated 12 companies. Four of them have already got uh, funding from, the, uh, from next round uh, uh, investors. One of them, Deloka, uh, which is a daily coupon company, has been invested in the next round by uh, SoftBank. 
uh, okay, uh, so as telcos, I think it's worthwhile for at least some of the telcos and for folks in the audience who are startups to see what do we want. So we, we love experimenting, you know. It's the good thing about being a new business, you can try new ideas. So last year, last year was a, not a fantastic year from us for a core network business. So our voice revenues had negative growth, data revenues had a fantastic growth, but the overall growth was, uh, was less than uh, 10%. So we said let's, and the churn is very high in our market. So we said about 15% a month on average. So we said, why don't we try something new? So we have two consumer brands for prepaid, which is about 90% of the market in terms of revenue and about 99% of the market in terms of customers. We said, we will, for these brands, package some of the startups we're working with as their products. And in the process, we took the, and we said we also take the price up. So uh, let me go back actually. So, uh, so what we did is we said we'll package a taxi company. So we grabbed taxi with a company which we helped establish. We didn't put money in, unfortunately, but we helped establish. So every ride which a customer who downloaded the app onto their Intosat phone and booked the ride took, they got $3 off. Similarly, one of the companies which I was a, um, a mentor of called Crave, which is like an open table concept, you book through an Intersat uh, phone, you get your dessert for free. Food Panda, which is a food delivery service, you book your delivery, you get something free. So, you know, we put things in which cannot be matched by competition because you know, if you bring the price down, next to the competition matches, right? Because something like this cannot be matched. And it worked quite phenomenally well for us. So this is the collaboration model. So, you know, it's acquisition. Uh, we can do loyalty, brand building, and business enablers. Typically, basically, it is about what can our customers get which are competing customers or, com or customers from a competing network cannot get. So this is the which we go after, in addition to, of course, enabling the, uh, the payment. I'll come to that in a minute. Uh, uh, so uh, basically, the old approach was you, you, know, you give things for free in terms of bring the prices down, you give zero-rated data, and so on. We're moving to a model where we do not compete on price of the basic telco products and actually compete on the price of something else, which is uh, uh, other services. I think I'll, I'll skip to. So this is what we actually did. So with the, uh, with the brand, which is Mantari, I'm looking at the clock and rushing through the point where you know, we can work with, uh, with uh, uh, startups. So we said, uh, so there was a, a price pack, say, about $3. We took the price up to about $3.5. So what do you expect? Let's journal come down. But for that price increase, we gave a number of things. I already mentioned the taxi company. I mentioned the restaurant company. We gave some uh, messaging app. We gave a video service and so on. And I'll come to the slide. And then what happened? So the, the churn on the slide, uh, the churn on this product was running at about 10%. So when we took the prices up, so we took the price up from about, as I said, about $3 to about $3.5, $3.7. And everybody said, don't do this. The churn's quite high. You're spending so much of money acquiring customers. Do not increase the price. But we said, we'll do that. And we started this concept called Club. And we put all those pieces. And look what happened. Right away, the churn began to come down. So that was the impact on churn between our brands. So the yellow brand is the Mantari brand where we actually came up with the packaging of, uh, you know, <coughs> of the taxi and the restaurant and so on. And uh, the other one we did not. And there was a right away an impact. So we expanded this to all our brands and offering a variety of services. Uh, uh, the, the, the key aspect which we, we provide to our startups and what we get in return is basically you know, on this slide. So I'll go to the bits on the left, which is what do we provide as a telco to uh, startup companies. So as I said, the key challenge for startups is getting your app or your message or your service out there. So we very actively promote these startup services to our customer base. So it could be through a simple SMS, which doesn't have a great take-up rate, or through a more targeted messaging through our mobile advertising company, which is the first point. The second is we have a customer self-care app. We have uh, our web presence. We have our Twitter, Facebook, and so on presence. And we also promote the deal which we have with the startup service on, the, on our online presence. Uh, balance inquiry, many of these services which startups have need to have some revenue often you know, paid for. Not all services are free, some obviously are paid, especially e-commerce or related services. We enable carrier billing. So in markets like ours, where credit card penetration is quite low, 
we enable uh, people to pay for these services using the balance. So, the, so right away you go to, in our case, 300,000 points of presence. So in 300,000 points of presence, you can actually go and make a payment for the startup service you have. Just think how expensive it will be for a new company to establish 300,000 points of presence. So that's the piece around the, uh, around the balance inquiry about where money is put in. We have an API uh, library which we have uh, enabled, opened, and published. So it becomes easy for startups to plug into various boxes, for example, our, our location uh, platform, our billing platform, our CRM platform, in case you want to target certain categories of customers and so on. So we have that enabled. Uh, uh, in case some of these startups want to, uh, you know, obviously you cannot, you know, our country is quite large, but say a startup wants to go after the main cities of, say, Jakarta, Bandung, which are two large towns, then what we provide is actually points of present, so, you know, you have, uh, distribution, for example, it could be a pamphlet, it could be a video running on the, uh, on the television screens of the points of sale and so on, so that the word goes out there, which we actively manage from a central location, so you don't have to go to multiple points to actually upload videos and so on. So we offer that, and then we offer standard terms. So what <coughs> in the old telco thing, each, each partner coming in would have to frankly make a PhD thesis. I remember six, seven years ago, when we were to ask partners to come in, they had to write, you know, so-called VAS, right? They had to, you know, say, we, we are so-and-so, this is the background, we work with so many companies, this is our revenue model, this is the business case, this is so on and so forth. And the, 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 the proposal would often be quite thick and take three, four months to actually have the, the sort of the agreement signed. So we have standard terms between the person approaching us, the company approaching us, the decision taken and it taken to market. We are working to an SLA of 30 days, as in one month to actually have that whole thing turned around. So because you know, startups do not have the bandwidth to spend too much of time and effort on running after uh, partnership deals. But so we provide hell of a lot. So what do we expect in return? So one is a special offer. I think as you speak to telcos and other markets, your markets, something has to be special. Grab Taxi gave $3 off to Intersat customers vis-a-vis -vis Telcom seller Excel customers. The restaurant company, you know, the, the food panda, the food delivery service, gave a certain proportion of money off to us compared to, uh, to our customers compared to our competition, although only for a certain amount of time, say one month or three months. So the time exclusive, but a special offer. You guys, the startups, are much better at juicing out more for the money spent on digital marketing compared to us. So you know whether it's putting money into blog, I mean putting comments onto the blog space, or advertising on Facebook and so on. So we expect for whatever money we put in, at least one-tenth of that is put in by the startup in terms of their cash for marketing, so that you want the skin of the game from the partner as well. We have explore, you know, exposed our APIs. All the background work in terms of you know, how you plug in, how you test, how you do on, we leave to you. I mean, we do the final testing, but everything else till the final testing is left for the startups, because also we also you know, resource constrained. Adopt payment methods. We have our mobile wallet, we strongly encourage the startups we work with to also use it because we know it is a huge, huge incentive for startups because it becomes so much easier for them to collect cash. So it's a payment method. And obviously you know, we also have to make a bit of, you know, of money. So if there is a revenue model associated with a startup, we do a revenue share. So uh, I'm coming to the end of my time, but what I was thinking of, you know, what the whole idea was how do large companies, which are somewhat stodgy like telcos are, how do we work with fast companies, many of whom will succeed, so that we help and grow in their success? So that's what I spoke about, and I could possibly take uh, questions. So thank you. Okay, there are none. Thanks a lot. <laughs>